I want to welcome everybody to Mahon Hadar. Uh, my name is Rabbi Ellie Confer. I'm the executive director uh, here at Mahon Hadar. I'm so pleased to see so many new and, uh, and uh, familiar faces with us. Um, Mahon Hadar is really about raising pressing and critical issues in Jewish life to public discourse. Um, we do that in so many different ways, and tonight actually kicks, uh, kicks off our college winter learning seminar, a week-long program for uh, about 30 college students from around 20 campuses around the country who are coming to learn with us on the topic of Shabbat, um, which you'll recognize uh, as the topic of tonight's dialogue. Um, and we're really about elevating a public conversation of Torah that speaks to um, the issues that are relevant to all of our lives today. Uh, we, we can think of no better way to do that um, than to welcome a sitting U.S. Senator, Senator Paul Lieberman, um, to be with us tonight to speak about the role that Torah and Mitzvot has played in his life and to discuss with um, Rabbi Ethan Tucker, um, our uh, Rosh Hashiva and uh, relative of Senator Lieberman, um, to dialogue around the meaning of all of these uh, important critical Jewish moments in his life um, to hopefully give some greater meaning for our own Jewish lives. So please uh, join me in welcoming Rabbi Ethan Tucker and Senator Jim Lieberman. Great to see everybody. Uh, I know we have a lot of sight lines, but you'll, you'll move around in here, and I'm sure everyone will, will get a chance to see. Uh, I want to I welcome everyone and uh, thank everyone, different, different groups of people who are here. Uh, first of all, those who anchor this Beit Midrash as a place of learning on a daily basis are full-time fellows here at Yeshivat Hadar, uh, who help make everything possible here on a daily basis. Uh, and also, another special cohort of learners that we have here this week for our winter learning seminar. Uh, 27 students from, I think, almost 20 campuses from all around the country uh, who are here to join us for an intensive week of learning uh, around Shabbat. Um, there's also uh, two other people I want to just uh, mention and thank. Uh, first of all, acknowledge the presence of Harold Winston, who's here this evening and who has helped to be uh, not just not just been a friend and a supporter of Mahon uh, Hadar from the start, but also uh, was a real uh, real force behind making this evening happen. Uh, the other person I want to acknowledge uh, and put front and center, even though she won't be uh, right here up with us, is my mother, Adasa Fry with Lieberman, um, who is uh, back along with my stepfather, right back from Israel visiting. Uh, uh, my sister, who is there, thank God for the year. And uh, just to begin, just by thanking my mother uh, for, among other things, beyond just being my mother, uh, being uh, a real driving force in my own thinking of what Torah has to be and should be for the world, and the ways in which we pay close attention, we ought to pay close attention to the moments in history in which we live, and the elements of the conversation that will focus around that axis tonight uh, very much drawn so much that you've taught me. Um, uh, I also want to say, by way of final introduction, uh, with respect to my other parent uh, up here this evening, uh, Senator Joe Lieberman, the, uh, the Mishnah plays out the unpleasant dilemma of what a person does when there is a conflict between uh, serving one's teacher and serving one's parent, uh, and how one balances what it means to honor one or the other when one has to make that choice. And I think one of the great privileges in life is to feel that your parents are among your deepest teachers, uh, such that the conflict never arises. And uh, I hope in the context of this conversation uh, that so much of what I've learned from you and by your example uh, will come out and just to, before we get any further, just to thank you for that as well. Uh, as, as we say on the Senate floor, I've asked my distinguished colleague if I might interrupt. <laughs> uh, I have learned a lot from uh, Tom, too. Uh, he's talking a lot. And, uh, so I want to begin by thanking your mother, too. <laughs> Because uh, if it weren't for her, I would never have come to know you as well as I do. And uh, though uh, I'm not uh, your biological parent, I, I certainly consider you to be my son, and I'm very, very proud of everything you've done. I just said to a group of people before that when I met Eitan, he was six years old, and 
and uh, he was already impressive. He was, uh, I know this will shock you, but he was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had some capacities that one doesn't expect in a six-year-old. He had a phenomenal memory. And uh, at six or shortly thereafter, it seemed to me that he had learned uh, every interstate highway in the United States and could tell you how to get from wherever we are to wherever you wanted to go. And in some sense, I suppose this led him uh, inevitably to become a rabbi. <laughs> the other connection was that uh, when I met him, I don't know that this was me who gave you this name, but affected by a movie that was popular around that time, we called him E.T., as in uh, extraterrestrial, uh, which also suggested uh, the spiritual future. <laughs> anyway, uh, E.T. has really enriched uh, No, I'm going to stop that. He's now Rob A. Tom. <laughs> he has really uh, enriched... Um, our lives, and uh, I'm very proud of what he and uh, Ellie and Shai have done in creating uh, Yeshivat Machon Hadar. It's really unusual and uh, extraordinary. It, it created a community of scholars, uh, it's a community of prayer, and it's a community of service to the community. And um, of course, it's uh, coincidentally a community in which men and women have equal. Uh, access and responsibility to be in, in involved in all of those communities. And I, I think it's, this is something unique in, um, in Jewish history. You know, I meant to ask you, last week I was actually in Erbil, Kurdistan, and uh, the Council General was talking about the rich Jewish history there and said that, he's not Jewish, said that he thought that perhaps the first Jewish rabbi, this woman, woman Jewish rabbi, was from a town called Barzan, and she had the same name as the current. Uh, I'm looking to see if I have to Google this, or you've heard of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe it's apocryphal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Malcolm Hadar. Um, uh, I was telling you before when I was thinking this just earlier this evening that I read a book once by Rabbi David Hartman, which he called "A Heart of Many Chambers." It was his, I think, description of what Judaism should be, and I think the term comes from Talmud, uh, which is to say that Judaism is a big enough heart that it should have chambers that are many and that therefore are accessible to as many people as possible. So nobody feels, as you said, uh, that they're just these boxes. And if you don't fit exactly in those boxes, somehow you're not able to be a learned or uh, active Jew. And I think Machon Hadar has created a, uh, another uh, uh, chamber in the heart of Judaism, which is a big chamber uh, that clearly was needed because of the, uh, of the number of people that have, that have come to it and will continue to come to it. And I think not only, so, that, so I consider it not only to be an important part of the Jewish history, but also an important part of the Jewish future. And I'm, a, a, a signal of that is this really wonderful program that uh, you've given me the honor of beginning tonight with these college students on break. So this is good. They don't go to the Caribbean. They don't go to the Fort Lauderdale. They come to my home.